Okay, hi, this is Alistair Ewing from AME Bioscience, continuing our series of interviews with companies that have something new and interesting, either just launched on the market or about to launch on the market. Today, the company that I'm gonna be talking to is Sierra Biosystems, and specifically uh, to Bruce Erickson, who's the president of the company, and to Marshall Henry, who is the chief engineer. Now, Sierra Biosystems have developed a high-throughput oligonucleotide synthesizer, which provides significant benefits of cost savings to laboratories that need oligoprimers and probes, but also continuing to keep high quality of the final product. Now, today, with the issues of, of COVID-19 and difficulties of sourcing components for the real-time PCR kits, these instruments provide capacity that enables um, companies to produce a lot of probes and primers that can be used as components within uh, COVID-19 real-time PCR kits. So without further ado, I'd like to say welcome, Bruce and Marshall. Um, why don't we just kick off by you telling me a little bit more about Sierra Biosystems and about your main product, which looks like it's behind you on the screen here. Correct. Um, Sierra Biosystems was a spin-off company from our original company, uh, Certified Scientific Instruments. And we spun it off because we wanted to specifically zero in on how to make a better, more effective, efficient um, uh, DNA synthesizer. And that's what we've done with this Shasta product. And essentially, there were three drivers behind it. Uh, but one was safety, uh, both in terms of the instrument itself, which you are listed, and it will also, you'll be able to retain your intellectual property by making your own oligos. It's effective and it's efficient. Okay, great. So the instrument's called what, the Shasta? The Shasta. We're in the Sierra Nevada mountains near Yosemite, and we decided that uh, we were going to go ahead and just uh, uh, use some local uh, mountains here to name some of our instruments. Okay. Uh, right. after. So what, what's the benefits of, you know, I'm, a, I'm in a lab that does oligosynthesis. What's the benefits of a Shasta over existing technologies? Marshall, do you want to take it? Yeah, let me jump in. So like Bruce was saying, we started off as a servicing company. We worked with synthesizers for years that were already in the field. And through servicing these, we found that the typical issues in any synthesizer is going to be either reliability or versatility. For some reason in machines, you can have one but not the other, and there really is no reason for that. And so one of the benefits of this machine is that it is inherently reliable as there is only a positive pressure source that pushes fluids through and pulls through the support. Beyond that, there's the versatility that is inside the machine we have 16 different drain lines attached to the drain apparatus. And what this allows us to do is run 16 different protocols simultaneously. That means on a 96 well plate, you're going to have six replicates of 16 different conditions. So you can have different protocols ranging from different scales to different ways you handle bases. And this can all change per base in the sequence, per MER or layer, if you will. You can change the protocol everywhere on the plate for every single base. 16 different times you can have different protocols doing entirely different things. This allows people that are working in R&D to quickly get to perfect protocols with new chemistry. That, that's probably the biggest benefit to this machine. Other than that, it, it is, as I said before, reliable. It's using only positive pressure. So there are no vacuums in this machine. All that matters is that you take a look at the gauges here and make sure they're consistent. And if they are and your reagents are fresh, you will get the same results. It's also very safe. It was UL listed, and I, I think it may be the only UL listed synthesizer to hit the market in the last 20 years. I, I'm sure, Bruce, can you speak to that a little more? Yeah, I uh, noticed that there were a lot of one-off uh, synthesizers in the market that were being sold that, in essence, looked like they had been garage built. And we wanted to have an instrument that was engineered from the plate on out, but also very safe. So we wanted a third party, and in this case, UL, who took one of our instruments and put it through various tests for three months, winding up with a test where they put it in a 98% uh, humidity with uh, 
100 uh, degrees C for two days and fried it, nothing happened. So it's electrically safe then. That's good. Electrically safe. The um, the amidites and liquids are below the electronics. They're separated from the electronics. It, it's not going to catch on fire. It's not going to melt valves. And they're, in terms of reliability, these are Burkert valves, just like you'll find on our upgraded 3900s. They're they're just workhorses. So they're yeah. it, it's it's very similar in some ways to a 3900 in terms of the positive pressure. And if you've used a 3900, you'll find this very familiar. Okay. Going, going back, Marshall, you, you mentioned that um, you essentially can run it. It sounded to me like essentially 16 different synthesizers in one box. Um, okay. Would that be a fair comment? Yeah, so it's 16 different six column machines in one. Now something that I didn't mention before, in terms of versatility, not only do you have columns to work with, but you also have plates. So we accept a 96 format or a 384 well format. You can use plates or columns in the 96 well format. Uh, plates are harder to find in a 96 well configuration, but columns are ubiquitous. So that's been our preference thus far. Um, I say that because not only can you have 16 different machines running six columns, you can also change to the 384 well format. And in every row of your 384 well plate, you have 16 different rows. Each row can have its own protocol. So now you've upgraded to 24 replicas. Okay. So that, that's just a, a further example of, yes, there's versatility. And yes, you have multiple machines inside of one now. And so with that, you can, I assume, then run um, DNA synthesis chemistries, RNA synthesis chemistry, labeling chemistries and modification chemistries, and yeah, just about any combination you like on the yeah, one platform at the same time. And so the standard version of this machine comes with 24 amidite positions, just so you have all those options available to you simultaneously. Okay, sounds interesting. Yes, there's another aspect to this, and that is, um, with the plate-based uh, 96s and 384s now in the column-based 96s, you've got to drain that whole block all in one wax. So if you're doing some 30 mer and 80 mer oligos, you've and you're finished with your 30 mer, you have to keep putting ACN into those 30 mer columns or wells because otherwise it won't drain properly, and you have these long drains because the the, uh, the uh, the drain will blast on through the uh, shorter MERS that are already f finished. With our system, you've got one row at a time of either six or 24, and you've got all the pressure of the chamber just on that row. So you're going to go ahead and get a real complete um, drain on that without having to uh, waste ACN and gas on all your other, uh, on all your other uh, uh, columns or uh, wells. It's really a cost effective that way and you have less downstream waste. Okay. And customers that you have, I mean, I understand that you've, uh, this has gone beyond development, it's in production and you have, you know, what applications typically or what kind of customers do you have that are buying this instrument with the capacity you have? I mentioned a little bit about the um, COVID-19 kits. Is that um, a customer or a market area that's, uh, um, been successful for you? Yeah, yeah, let me just jump in for a minute here, Marshall. Uh, we have a, um, the first uh, customer or the first uh, test kits that were FDA approved is a company that's using our instrument for that purpose. And it's good in terms of developing your methods and, and, and that, but you can also cr just crank out your probes and primers like crazy because you don't have to have 16 different protocols running at once. You can have one and just make all the all the goes and probes you want. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now I've um, I grew up in the time when applied biosystems first introduced the first their first automated DNA synthesizers, and I've followed DNA synthesis for many years. And I realized, you know, in the pharmaceutical industry, they have a lot of different requirements of a synthesizer and the requirements are flexibility. So um, flexibility of software um, customization because they look at different analogs uh, of various oligos. Do you 
um, meet or conform to the, the requirements of the pharmaceutical industry in terms of its research uh, capabilities? Yeah, so li like I was saying, I mean, we designed this with versatility in mind. So th there, there are many instances where you have control over e each step in the process between banks, between sets of replicates, however you want to call it. So uh, one example of that is you can change per base if you like, and you can do that for each set of six columns or row in the 3D4 well plate. Uh, another example of that is that you see the bottles on the front of this machine here. If you need it to run faster, you can use these as ACGT, ACGT, or you can split them in half and have them be ACGT, the recipe specialty. So now you've just opened yourself up to an additional four amidites. Part of the part of the design of this machine was um, well, the whole of the design of the machine was around the plate but we really put a focus on being able to get to every single valve, every single dispense tip that was available to the plate. That means that every single valve, if we wanted to, can control for a different liquid. That opens up uh, to, to a world of possibilities. It, you know, you, you have to weigh the pros and cons, of course. I mean, you hit a point of dimin diminishing returns with your throughput because you want to keep speed in mind, but the possibilities are really limitless, and that's that's how we've drawn so many of our early customers in is that we can make the machine be what you want it to be you tell us what are the synthesis scales that you offer yeah so we do uh the 96 well mode and the 384 well mode in the 96 well mode like i was saying we accept columns or plates and these run from 40 nanomole up to one micromole and then in the 384 well plate mode uh, we're proud to say that we accept a variety of commercially available plates and most go from two nanomole up to 50 nanomole. Two nanomole. Beyond that, something I'd like to say, so, uh, what, what sorry, we're working sorry, on... Uh, Marshall, did you say two nanomoles? Yes. Okay. Two, two nanomoles up to 50 nanomoles. That's standard for most commercially available 384 well plates. Some will only go to 40, but it just depends on uh, the distributor you're working with. Right. Uh, something else we've been working on, because we do have capacity, is we're working on creating another apparatus that allows you to insert syringe-style bodies, uh, pack your own syringes for even larger scales. Um, if, if I could have just another moment to maybe give a physical demonstration of what I mean. This is the apparatus that sits inside of your machine. The draining portion is on the bottom. The part that holds the consumables is on top. And you can change this out with multiple different styles. So you can also place a 384 well plate on this block. Okay. And then in the next design, you will be able to put syringe style bodies on this same block. So you don't have to actually go in and break out the tool set to change anything out. It's as simple as clipping in your new apparatus. So I, I just wanted to show that since I had it sitting here. That's convenient. And um, now, let me say one thing about that too, Alistair, because that block is set up to accept the normal kind of 384 well plate or the no normal kind of column that you'll find. We don't have an exclusivity in terms of having a, a certain kind of plate that's going to have to fit that, but we've got our patents around um, making that block such that you can use an average 384 well plate mm -hmm. and when we were vetted by one of the large pharma companies we went through i think three or four pages of can you can you do this can you do that and it's things like are the parts commonly available so we can in essence fix our own do we have to buy um special parts from you like plates etc and we're not holding people to us in terms of trying to vertically integrate the company so that we can maximize not only um the, you know, we want to make a profit on the machine, but we don't have to keep doing that with your uh, consumables and parts, et cetera. That, that comes to my next question, actually, which was, do you supply the consumables and the reagents for the instrument? And the answer, I think you said, is no. Is that correct? Yeah, what we prefer to do in, is kind of like when we install one of these, we want you to use our recipe. And our recipe is going to include reagents from Glenn. Once you use our recipe and you find out that that recipe validates the instrument, then you can go ahead and start doing variations on that if you want to with whatever supplier you use. 
Uh, yeah. But that's that's pretty much where we we are on that. So well, you have comment at this point in time, as a you have one recommended supplier that just verifies your protocols, and that's Glenn for amidites and reagents. Is that correct? Right. That's how we vetted our own machine and built our own protocols is through Glenn supports and Glenn reagents. But um, you know, we we're not looking to act as middlemen. We we want to help you get started and then get the best prices you can so you can do your own work. Okay. So you you essentially you can. There's nothing to stop you using another supplier of quality phosphoramidites, quality uh, solvents, etc. Right? Yeah, you you can use whoever you want. If you want to use really crummy amidites, then you can go ahead and <laughs> waste your reagents. So, but I think everybody has certain preferences along that line, and and we're not going to tie somebody to one certain thing. We do want to make sure though that when we validate the instrument on site, that we we know what we what we're working with. Yeah. Of course. What about downstream downstream processing? Sorry. Once uh, I guess you have the same uh, as is phosphoramidite chemistry, you have the same uh, requirement to to deprotect and cleave your oligos at the end of the synthesis. Do you have uh, an apparatus to do that, or is it done on the instrument? How, how do you do that? Yeah, we have separate our apparatuses built for uh, cleaving and deprotecting the oligo. Mm -hmm. We uh, have different tools for plates and columns, but those are all provided with the instrument, yes. Okay. How do you sell this? What are the main marketing channels? Bruce, do you want to take that one? Yeah, well, what we've, we have been a company that's been more engineering based than marketing based. That's part of the reason why we're having this discussion with you, Alistair, just to get the word out there. And, um, we had these at some of the uh, conferences, et cetera. And um, as we're ramping up to uh, build our next 10 of them, uh, as you're seeing here, uh, these are the new dual plate ones that'll take either single or dual plates up to uh, 24 ammonite positions. We're, we're uh, in, the, in the process of, uh, you know, getting, getting quotes out to people and, and, and sending them out. Right now, um, we'll have We've got two available now that are single plate configurations, and then we'll, uh, we're also uh, beginning to take uh, orders on our dual plate system. And those will be ready in July. The single plates are ready now. But you sell those direct. You don't have uh, other distribution channels. Not at this point, no. And, okay. and we want to go ahead and really keep a handle on these because these these are important instruments in terms of making it possible to for a individual company to keep their own IP in house and also have an instrument that will let them compete and do and do better quality and cheaper oligos and buying them from the from that one big oligo house. Okay, I mean apart from I know a lot of oligo houses have developed uh, systems in house, but there are two or three established manufacturers on the market. They've been around for many years, not actually had a lot of innovation from what I can see, but wh where do you position yourself in the market against those two or three existing companies? How do you um, see yourself as a, as a instrument that will allow a given company, and if a large company wants to buy from us that's fine too but it'll allow you to have an instrument that will will make the person wanting the probes to be able to get their oligos made on time more inexpensively than ordering from the large oligo houses especially the one or two that are out there okay. and we validated our instrument against those oligos and we're do we're doing uh, the same or better. Would you say you're um, higher priced than your competitors or are you about the same? We're about the same with, the, with this caveat. Um, we have an instrument that's gonna operate faster and overall your, your costs are gonna be less simply because of the reagent. Uh, the reagents are gonna be um, go farther and you're not going to have the same waste stream you have. 
okay. with the uh, with our competitors. Marshall, why don't you make a comment on that too? Yeah, just in terms uh, the other thing I want to say uh, is yeah, for, for, for pricing, I mean, we my understanding is that we will be about on par with our competition, but the, the reality is that our, our profit margins are going to be lower because what I said in the beginning was that we were after reliability and versatility. And when we put these machines together, they're not put together with thin sheet metal and cheap gaskets. We use half inch thick aluminum that is Teflon impregnated and we use CalRes seals everywhere. These machines are built for abuse. I mean, they are built to last. So yeah, we're gonna be on par price wise, but we do not compromise in giving you the best machine you can get for your money. Okay, so again, this, these are just short interviews, but for anyone watching this or listening to it, what important benefits would you like to highlight that we've actually not discussed uh, in the previous uh, discussion that we've had during this interview? Um, yeah, so I guess the first thing I want to say, yeah, the first thing I want to say about that is that, you know, we're, we're a new company, obviously, this is a new machine. So that that's going to make many people wary. Um, a lot of people like to wait until the technology is vetted, and that's very reasonable. But for those that are interested in new technology and are interested in working with a company that wants to push the envelope and wants to raise the bar, we are here for you. We want to make the machine that you want and you will have an edge on your competition by having the best machine that's out there. And not just that, for the first customers we do have, and we've already done this, of course, because we do have customers, we are willing to alter the software for your needs. So when you get the standard machine, play with it, see how you like it, and then tell us how it can be better and we will change it for you. So that's probably the first thing I'd like to say. And then the next thing is that, just to kind of go over what Bruce had said before, is that we're big ABI fans as far as their synthesizers go. And so if you've got experience with their machines, uh, the 3900 in particular, you'll find this is an ideal upgrade. Uh, the supports, the consumables are gonna be a, a direct carry over the post-processing setting. It's, it's gonna be the same. You, the PMs are gonna be the same almost. You know, you, you'll really like it. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Bruce, or are you? If you look at um, the machine behind me, you'll see, you know, the buttons that hold the uh, bottles are on the, are the same as on a 3900. On the other hand, if you want to put Boston rounds on there, you can do that too. Uh, but you're going to be real familiar with the handles. You can, uh, in terms of the machine itself, it'll have the same amidite bottle uh, buttons that you've got on your ABI instrument. It'll have the same screw handles that screw it down, you're gonna find some real easy similarities there. One thing I would say though is this operates on an XY axis. So you have two slides inside the machine that are, again, the gas comes through in to wash that lead screw so that, it'll, that it is robust. But, it, but by having that XY axis, we're able to, as Marshall said, move any tip to any position on those blocks but also we're only using half the valves to get more variability than they'll have on a machine. Say, well, you've got all the valves uh, on a board behind with um, two and three foot long delivery lines. We have six inch delivery lines uh, between the, um, the uh, valve and the actual tip. So everything's crisp, everything's safe. It's effective, fewer moving parts. It's, it's, it's the latest, and it's and it's been created from that plate on out. Great. Okay, all sounds good. Um, interesting developments. It sounds like a great instrument for people that are needing to make uh, a variety of, you know, oligos, uh, be them DNA, RNA, or, or modified uh, um, oligos. For anybody that wants to find out more from you or to contact you directly, uh, where should they go? Yeah, uh, go, to, go to our website. Uh, that's www.sierrabio.com, spelled S I E R R A B I O.com. And you can contact us at info at sierrabio.com, and we'd love to talk to you. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, and I enjoyed it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Walter. Take care. Bye. Yeah, bye.